Hey everyone, Vince Lewis with Partners MGU here. You've heard a lot about the COVID-19 pandemic and how it impacts the self-funded industry. You saw our recent podcast with Adam Russo of the FIA Group. We spoke on this topic and its residual effects, in particular the area of mental health and substance abuse. Right? Yep. So you got behavioral health issues, you have potential, you know, drug addiction issues, you got, I mean, everything we're noticing, people weren't getting that preventive care. So from a claim standpoint and a patient behavior standpoint, there are things that we're trying to help people fix. This got me to thinking, well, how bad is it? So I decided to do some digging and this is what I found out. According to a Kaiser Foundation study in January, 2021, 41% of adults over age 18 reported symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder, which previously had only been around one in 10 adults. Among some of the negative impacts surrounded lack of sleep, food, or increases in alcohol consumption or, consumption or substance abuse. As it relates to substance abuse and mental illness, 13% of adults had new or increased use of drugs and alcohol, and 11% thought of suicide in the last 30 days. The largest demographic surrounds adults age 18 to 24 with over 56% reporting signs of anxiety or depression. But in reality, no demographic has been spared here. Want more proof? I found a LexisNexis study that indicated that there has been an increase in telehealth claims of over 6,500% for behavioral health claims or services between January 20 and February 21. Not 65%, not 650%, but 6,500%. This includes a 3,000% increase in claims for anxiety, a 2,500% claims for, for depression, and 1,400% increase for substance abuse. So if telehealth claims increase that much, you have to figure that during COVID, these mental health professionals had to be prescribing medication for some of these individuals. According to the CDC, nearly 65 million people, which represents one in five of the U.S. population, is taking prescription mental health medication, an increase of 6.5% in the last eight months. Furthermore, 18 states have seen increases anywhere from 10 to 20% in the increase in the use of prescription mental health medication for the last year. So what does that mean for us in our business? As the residual effects continue as we come out of this, I believe we're gonna see some trends continue toward increasing drug costs, increased in patient mental health and drug rehab stays, as well as likely abuses by providers who wanna take advantage of ambiguous wording and self-funded plan documents. The average mental health stay costs around $15,000 for 30 days. Substance abuse stays account for anywhere from $6,000 to $20,000 for a 30-day stay. And we're not even talking about outpatient treatment. Is this a harbinger of doom? Perhaps an over-exaggeration. Perhaps by itself it may not be, but when you pile it on with the effects of deferred utilization for other illnesses due to COVID, I believe that in a year's time, we may see some potential upheaval in the medical stop-loss market. Thanks again for watching. I'm Vince Lewis. We'll see you next time.